some of my favorite moments in life have been standing in a swamp where no biologist has ever been. As night falls, the frogs begin to call. Each species of frog has a different call. Some of the frogs I hear have never been heard by scientists before, and some are completely unknown to science. One of my greatest fears is that when future generations venture into the swamps and streams at night, they won't be greeted by the trills and chirps of frogs, but by silence. Already there are parts of the world where the streams are already silent, where previously you would have been greeted by the calls of two dozen frogs at night. Now you'd be lucky to hear just a few. I'm involved in a global race. There are no winners, but there may be thousands of losers. Globally, one third of all roughly 7,000 species of frogs are threatened with extinction. They're the most threatened group of animals on the planet, declining faster than birds or mammals. Frogs are being hit by the perfect storm of threats. Habitat loss is wiping out their breeding habitat and their homes, and much of it's a lot less obvious than this. Frogs are so sensitive to environmental change that we change things just a little bit, such as mudding the stream or changing the vegetation slightly, then we make it impossible for them to survive. An array of previously unheard of diseases are wiping out entire populations, and climate change and pollution are pushing frogs to the edge. Already, we have lost 200 species of frog, and thousands are perched right on the edge of extinction, like this little guy up here, the Australian lace lid. But this isn't just about frogs. This affects us all. Frogs are only a small part of the ecosystem, but they're a really important part. They're small cogs in the machines that sustain life. They have disproportionately large effects on ecosystems, and in some places, they may be keystone species, so when they disappear, ecosystems crumble around them. And although often unseen, frogs can be at really high abundances. So the weight or biomass of all the frogs in some habitats may be greater than that of birds or mammals. So if you made a pile of all the frogs in a forest, another pile with the mammals, and another pile with the birds, in many places, the frog pile would be the biggest. To illustrate, this is not a photograph of the Milky Way. It's a photograph I took at night of a waterfall. And they're not stars. It's a reflection of my camera flash in the eyes of hundreds of frogs. That's a lot of frogs. So it's not surprising that when they disappear, things change. In fact, when frogs disappear, entire ecosystems can be changed irreversibly. And unfortunately, we know a little bit about what happens when frogs disappear from the places where they have. Streams clog up with algae without tadpoles. And without frogs, all the predators that used to dine on them begin to starve. And it seems that frogs are irreplaceable. No other animal steps up to fill their role even years after they're gone. The machine cannot be repaired. And although we depend on healthy ecosystems to survive as well, frogs may have more direct benefits for our very own survival. Frogs may help keep mosquitoes at bay, so healthy populations of frogs in your neighborhood may actually reduce your chances of getting mosquito-borne diseases like dengue and Zika virus. And many frogs also produce a cocktail of chemicals on their skin to stop them from getting infected. 
But these chemicals are actually now being explored for use in human medicine as antibiotics, painkillers, and even contraceptives, and in the fight against cancer and HIV. This Australian red-eyed tree frog produces secretions that are antibiotics and have anti-HIV properties. So it's clear from the planet's perspective and potentially from our very own survival perspective that frogs are important and we need to do something to stop this decline. But one of the biggest problems we face is that we know so little about frogs. After my PhD stalking frogs in tropical North Queensland, I decided that I could contribute most to amphibian conservation by packing my bags up and moving to Cambodia. The forests of Southeast Asia were disappearing at a dramatic rate, and we didn't even know how many frog species there were in the region, never mind how they were doing. It was a black hole in our, our knowledge of frogs. So, with an amazing group of local biologists and students, I set out into the forest in search of frogs to get a better understanding of how they were doing. We walked through streams, up mountains, scaled waterfalls, and into swamps. We camped in the forest at night in hammocks and donned headlamps and went out searching for frogs in the night. And what did we find? We found amazingly healthy populations of frogs. The streams were not silent, far from it. At dusk, the chirps, whistles, and clicks of frogs erupted from the forest. And many of these species were completely unknown to science. I'm proud to say that we have so far on these expeditions discovered 21 new species of frog. and I'd like to introduce you to just a few of them. Meet the vampire flying frog. This frog uh, is adapted for life in the trees, and it's named because its tadpoles, instead of having a normal mouth parts, actually have black fangs that stick out of their mouths. They don't suck blood, but they do use the fangs to scoop the eggs their mother lays for them to eat in the tree holes in which they're placed. Helen's flying frog, which is exquisitely adapted for gliding rather than flying, with enormous hands and feet that it uses like parachutes to glide out of the canopy and land in ponds below. Why climb down a tree when you can glide? The thorny tree frog, which is unusually for a frog, pink and yellow, and males become covered in hard spikes during the breeding season and Quang's tree frog, which is better known as the frog that sings like a bird. Instead of repeating the same call over and over again, like most frogs, this frog has what's called a hyperextended vocal repertoire, meaning that no two calls are the same. This species, which is only about two centimeters big, has green blood, turquoise bones, and it lays its eggs on the tips of leaves, which then turn into tadpoles and drop into pools below. And there are many, many more species that await discovery in the forests. Some of them are as impressive as some of these guys. Others are small and brown, but no less important. But the forests are fast disappearing, the streams fast muddied and polluted, and if we're not quick, the frogs that live in these forests and many places around the world will never be discovered. They'll be wiped off the face of the earth before we even know they exist. The race is on to discover these species before they're driven to extinction. When people think of endangered animals, they usually think of something fluffy, like a panda or a tiger, or maybe the slightly less fluffy rhino. And while these animals are definitely in a lot of trouble, we need to think of frogs. If we act now to save frogs, then our children's children might be able to hear the sound 
of a healthy planet.